Hey guys, Tony Rowe here, back with another Lee Chess Classical game. And I'm going to mix it up. This is something that I literally never play. I, I never play the French defense, but sometimes you gotta you gotta switch it up. I'm sure people on my channel are sick of Alakine's defense and possibly even the Sicilian. <laughs> so we're going to play a French defense. I hope everyone's having a good weekend. Oh my god. You know, this is like... All right. Well, this is what you get. You know, you, you decide to mix it up on your channel. And these savages just make you pay. Literally right out of the gate. Ugh. I'm sad. Okay, I'm going to put the bishop on d6. I have vague recollections that maybe I'm supposed to go knight e7. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Bishop e2. That seems like kind of a lame square. I was going to go bishop d3, knight e7, and then bishop f5. But now I think I'm probably just going to go knight f6. Because e4 is a little bit weaker, and there's no, there's less of a point in going... In going bishop f5 when when the bishop isn't on d3, so. Now, do I go h6 right away? Do I play knight b to d7? Do I play something else completely? Probably I should put my light squared bishop somewhere and then maybe go knight b to d7. So where do I want to put it? Um, hmm. I'm going to go to... Jeez, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't think... It, it probably doesn't matter that much. This is dead equal no matter what. Jeez. Uh, Okay, I'm going to go to g4. I don't know why. So now I'm guessing... Well, yeah, so probably these three moves are... Well, that move would be impressive and bad. Uh, these three moves are the, the major candidates here. Maybe h3 you can, you can throw in as a possibility. <coughs> I don't think black has any real problems here. It is a French exchange. Now, now I, I shouldn't be too harsh on my opponent because there was a pretty almost 100% chance that I was going to I was going to just French ruby him. So <laughs> I was I was lamenting lamenting his his lame opening choice and I was about to play, you know, 3 d takes e4, so but listen, Georg Meyer plays it. Georg Meyer is is one of my chess spirit animals, and I was going to play a French Rubenstein in, in tribute, but rejected. So I'm guessing I'm I'm supposed to go c6 and like put the queen on c7 or b6 and get out of this this nonsense. I'm gonna I'm gonna be fancy here. Get out of this. Yeah. Wondering if I can go knight e5, knight e5, bishop e5, bishop g4, bishop takes b2. Probably not. And he does like bishop e2, queen e2. There's the threat of knight d7, queen d7, bishop takes f6, g takes f6. So can I go bishop e5, d takes e5, knight e5, bishop g4, knight g4, queen g4, knight g4, bishop d8, rook a takes d8. That seems like the most natural way to play here. I could also just move my light squared bishop, like bishop e6 or bishop f5. 
So if bishop e2, queen e... No, if, if bishop takes e5, d takes e5, knight takes e5. Ah, he has bishop f6 first. Okay, so bishop e5, d takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and bishop g4, and I lose a piece. So that's not what I want. That doesn't seem very good. I don't really like trading here that much because I feel like it's just two whites advantage for me to give him this queen e2 move for free and trade these bishops off. I don't really want to do that. So maybe I should retreat the bishop. Bishop f5, bishop e6. Hmm. I could also take queen e2 and maybe, I don't know, h6, bishop h4, bishop e7 or something like that, just getting out of this, this pin. <coughs> bishop e2, queen e2, maybe rook e8, just pinning this knight. Bishop f5, bishop g4 still kind of hassles me is the problem. And I can't really go bishop g6 because I think either knight takes d7 or bishop d7 is just crushing. So I'd almost have to trade, but I don't really want to do that. Alright, this isn't super exciting, but I guess we're going for this. <laughs> I'm trying to like find some general way to keep keep some kind of excitement here. Probably this this video will all already have like half the views of a normal video given that it's a French exchange and it will have that in the title. <laughs> Maybe I should trick everyone and, and just put French defense and then find a thumbnail on like move two so you can't tell it's an exchange. <laughs> Uh, I'm always like thinking I should just flick in h6, but I'm not even sure that there's a benefit to doing so. And so maybe I shouldn't shouldn't weaken my king side without really a point. Knight d7 is a threat here though. True. H6. Yeah, then still knight d7, and I can't play h takes g5 because of knight takes f8. Okay. Ugh. I don't really want to play bishop e7, though. It seems so bad. So what if I just play rook e8 and I allow it? So knight d7, queen d7, bishop f6, g takes f6, maybe knight c3. I can take over the e-file with rook e2, queen e2, rook to e8. Yeah. Queen f3. Yeah, I mean, all these positions just look equal, I guess, but I have to watch out for, for my weakened king side here <clears throat> yeah not that exciting <clears throat> Ugh. yeah All right. uh, I don't want to <laughs> I'm like torn I, I just don't want to play this move I want to play rookie 8 but I don't want to man up and accept the the weaknesses after this. I feel like intuitively I should be totally fine there. I mean, the material's really reduced. But why even... Why even... Give my opponent that option, I guess. Alright, this is lame. 
French exchange, lame. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look up some, maybe some method to, okay, I, why would I look that up? I never play the French defense, but. Oh, by the way, I did, um, I did record a game before this. You might notice that my rating is a little bit different than, than the last, the last video for those of you who check for continuity and things like that. Um, you're the same people in movies who find like, you know, the guy's wearing the bracelet on like the wrong hand in the next scene or like, you know, whatever. But, um, I did, I did record a, uh, another video. I did lose that game, but towards the end of the video, I started becoming a little bit suspicious that my opponent was cheating and, uh, I, I checked into his games and just to be kind of impartial and fair, I had a, a, a couple of other Lee Chess staff members look at his games also, and they also thought that there was a pretty high probability that he was cheating. So I marked him and I don't really want to dignify those players with, with, uh, a video on my channel. So I did lose that game. You can find that game with the analysis still in my Lee Chess study, but you won't find the video. Queenie one, interesting move. Kind of like it. So what if I just go knight e4? Knight e4, bishop takes, bishop takes. Knight d7, queen d7, f3, knight back to f6, rook e7. Yeah, I don't really like that. Knight e4. Ah, I'm also losing a piece. Knight e4, knight d7, I think. Queen d7, bishop takes e7, queen e7, f3 with a pin. So that's out. Knight e5, d takes e5. Knight d7 maybe, bishop e7, queen e7. Knight c3 perhaps, c6. That looks about equal. I, I, I don't love giving my opponent that pawn on e5 though. There's a pretty concrete threat here. Guess I can also just go rook e8. Rook e8, knight d7, queen d7. This thing's protected. Bishop at, yeah. Okay, let's go rook e8. Just solid. He goes knight c3. I'll probably play c6. Yeah, it's just, I mean... It's just really hard to outplay someone from these positions. Like, there's one open file. It's extremely likely that at some point, like, you know, the heavy pieces are going to be exchanged down that file. Uh, text messages from my mom. I don't know why. Every single game, I never turn off my phone. It's off. <laughs> <clears throat> Stop calling me mom. You know, nowadays these young kids are just plugged into their phones all the time, and I'm really not an exception. I'm not a young kid, but I'm sort of in that middling generation where I grew up without cell phones, but, you know, at some point I also just, yeah, join the revolution. <laughs> So now knight e5, d takes e5, knight d7. Hmm. <sighs> Extremely exciting. All right, let's just go h6. I think now is a reasonable time to ask him what he's doing with that bishop. I'm 
thinking, well, I'm not sure. My, my idea was maybe after this I could go, like, Knight H5. Ah, Knight H5 I can't. Maybe I can go Knight E5, D takes E5, Knight H5, though. Bishop H4, my idea is to go Knight H5 to F4 and at least harass him a little bit. Maybe F4 is a good square. Hmm, interesting idea. Maybe I can go bishop h4, knight e5, d takes e5, knight h5. When knight f4 to e6 it looks like a very enticing blockade. <clears throat> I didn't take my, my uh, Claritin yet. I'm suffering this season. Knight d7. Mm, all right. I mean, he could even go bishop f6, bishop f6, rook e8, rook e8, queen d2, and be pretty much equal. I guess in that position, I have queen e6 or something, and I, I am, I have the only open file. He can't really contest it, but I'm not even certain that that's really much of anything. <clears throat> Yeah. This pin is annoying. True. True dat. Can I go 94? 94, bishop e7. No, I'm losing a pawn. Okay. Well, 94. But yeah. Well, okay, that, that move's not good. And I can't go knight h5 now either. Is king f8, like, totally unreasonable? Just planning knight h5? <laughs> How lame is that? Probably fairly lame. I'm just going to go king f8. Uh, at this point, I've sort of lost the will to live, figuratively speaking, in this game. Like, it's pretty clear that white just wants a draw, and... I mean, I'll continue to play this, but somehow, you know, with a almost entirely symmetrical pawn structure. I mean, just embarrassingly symmetrical. I mean, the game just sort of... kind of ceases to be... You know, I, I yeah, I mean, what am I supposed to say about this game? Like, White kind of wanted a draw, and, you know, okay, he's he's probably going to get his draw, but he should be ashamed of himself. <laughs> uh, what is there? Queen c7, maybe? Planning to harass him with queen h2. Bishop g3, bishop d6, bishop takes d6, queen d6 g3 or king back to g1 i guess i can take take rook e8 in that position try to yeah i mean maybe this is something maybe i can maybe i can try and harass him on the the king side here or or, or at least in this position maybe it looks like i'm getting the only open file so that can be something i've seen plenty of Ulf anderson games where he's won on the back of a single open file Maybe I can still try and get my knight to f4. Maybe I should go b5. Eh, b5, b4 allows knight a4, and then c5 is weak. I'm trying to find some way to, you know, improve my position further than what I already have. Maybe put my queen on f4 or something. Well, psych. <laughs> Maybe takes, queen takes rook e8, then queen e6, hitting g3. Conquering the file. He can go queen d2, but after queen e6, he can't go rook e1 because of queen h3. So he pretty much have to go king g2, and then I have he can't go rook e1 anymore. 
I have control of that file. Maybe then I can just go B5 to gain space. And maybe at some point B4 is good, allowing me into E2. Or 90, giving me an E4. Maybe I can also go knight e4 here, now that I see this position in person. Uh, let's go b5 first. I like gaining space in these types of positions. When your opponent has sort of limited counterplay and not a lot of options, I think a lot of times the, the next best thing you can do is gain some space. Clamp down and... Okay, so knight e4... Hmm. Should I go a5? I'm not certain. a5. Yeah, I think this is fine. I, I, if he moves the knight I, to, to threaten my a5 pawn, I really don't care. I mean, maybe just queen e4 check and then a4 or something. Or just a4 right away and just leave queen e4 check looming. I don't know. I'm, I'm not that upset to put my pawn on a4. At some point, maybe... Whoa. Pretty certain I'm going a4 here. Maybe knight e4 is an option. Nah, I don't like knight e4. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to go a4. I actually, not, now I'm really happy that I played b5, a5, you know, because th this pawn on a3 is going to need constant babysitting in an endgame. It's very common that these rook pawn thrusts in an endgame like this can sometimes create and fix weaknesses in your opponent's camp. This is why, like, you know, when your opponent has limited counterplay, a lot of times the best thing you can do is start to gain more space because you need to... In order to win these types of grindy endgames, you need to create weaknesses. And usually you need to create more than one weakness. Like, you need to create two. There's this old principle of the two weaknesses. <clears throat> one weakness, normally your opponent can hunker down. And, you know, when you concentrate all your forces on it, he can concentrate all his forces on it. And there isn't much to really do. I mean, but if, if there's a second weakness, normally... You know, if you hunker down on the first weakness, he protects the first weakness, you can more efficiently switch over to attacking the second weakness and, and make progress there. And so maybe, you know, you could almost consider, like, the E-file white's first weakness. I have full control of the E-file, and maybe you can consider some of these these pawns his, his second weakness. So maybe I can start to, to make progress here somehow. Like, I'm starting to think knight E4 is just going to be strong here at some point. Like, if it was my turn, knight e4, knight takes e4, queen e4, he can't go king f1 because of queen h1. If he goes f3, then queen e2 check, queen takes e2, wins a pawn. Yeah, rook a to d1 is an interesting idea, because now maybe knight e4, queen e4, f3, queen e2. King g1, let's say, he doesn't have to take my queen. But even so, I mean, knight e4... Queen e4, f3, queen e2, king g1, takes, takes, rook e1 check, king g2, rook a3, rook d3. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure I can make progress there. So what else? What else is there? H5 maybe? Just grab even more space? Like a savage? Queen F5, does that do anything? Not really. 
Oh, knight d7 to b6 to c4. Maybe? Yeah, let's do that. That looks really bad <laughs> for what this square. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of shocked I didn't see this much sooner. This looks really bad for, for white. <clears throat> Let's give that a whirl. So now b4 is actually going to really haunt, haunt white, I think. So on a5, hmm, I wonder if I had this idea sooner. Queen d3. Cop copycat. You dirty, dirty copycat. Uh, let's just go g6 and and stop that, I think. Rook d2. Okay, that's a good idea. So knight b6, rook e2. Queen d7, rook e1, queen e1. Yeah, I mean, oh man, I don't have a lot of time. Okay, I mean, the, the knight getting to c4 is going to be good, I think, pretty much no matter what. Pretty close to to you know just winning winning the a three pawn at that point. Yeah, so on, on rookie eight I'll take with the queen. I'm I'm honestly wondering if it's if it's possible for me to win with just a weakness on a three though. Like I'm wondering if knight c three like let's say we just take off the queens, we take off the the rooks, if knight c four can just be met with knight b one and then How do I make progress? I'm not I'm not sure actually. Kind of humorous. F4. Well, let's sink this thing in. Into the liver. I don't like F4 that much for white. I think it's a little bit weakening, but to each their own. Maybe white's counting on knight a3, knight a4 as like a discovery type type situation. Doesn't that lose the pawn though? What's your trick? Ah, queen e5. Do I care? I don't think so. So knight a3, queen e5, king g8, queen b8, king g7, queen e5, king h7, with knight c4 booting the queen next move. Does he have any other nasty double attacks? Queen f3... Queen d3, queen e3. Nope, I'm gonna take that. Hopefully, it hopefully it's good. I mean, now if this is good, White's in a lot of trouble because this past a pawn is incredibly significant. Maybe he was counting on queen e5. I'm not sure. I guess on queen b8, I can also just go king e7 immediately. I probably shouldn't give him queen e5 check for free, but. Queen 
queen e6, probably this is more than sufficient. Knight endings are a lot like pawn endings in sort of behavior, so I'm, I'm assuming that queen e6, fe6 is, w with this past a pawn, is, is essentially just winning on the spot. You know, up, up, up a pawn, especially this pawn and a pawn ending with a lot of pawns on the board is probably winning for black, so I'm assuming the knight ending is winning as well. Let's just get in. I mean, he might be compelled to play queen e5 check now. I'm not, I'm not certain. Yeah, I mean, something like queen c7, just trying to hit c6, queen d4, queen takes c6, knight c4, hitting this pin piece. He must go queen e8 to protect the piece, but then, but then like just a3. And the moment he moves his king, I'm going to play queen e3, queen e3, knight e3, king e3, a2, and he, he's just losing. <clears throat> well centralized queen. I can't believe I won this game. I mean, I think that probably maybe king f1 was a small mistake and then and then maybe white was slightly worse, but... Yeah. This looks bad. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm, I'm certain he's going to play this. Yeah, but isn't there this now? Just simplifying. I think so. Queen e8, forced, a3, resigns. <laughs> is probably the, the end of this game. Past a pawn, too strong. Yeah. Okay, I will just take that, I guess, and probably I'll just get in. Threatening queen f3, I'm guessing, is probably a threat. <laughs> okay, let's just take the queens off. Yeah, he can't stop the, the a2 pawn. Just for salt in the wounds, I'm going to play knight c5, I think. I could queen b7, queen b1, but I'm just going to play knight c5 and put him out of his misery here. All right, so let's take a look. Interesting game because I, I feel like uh, I really didn't deserve to, to win. But all right, let's um, do the usual. Let's toss this in the study. Yeah, there's a bug where the orientation doesn't switch to black. But that's okay, because we can flip the board. All right, so French exchange. I, I was for sure going to play the Rubenstein, which is, you know, may maybe makes me a terrible human being, but I actually think there's a lot of merit to the Rubenstein. One cool thing, of course, is that it really simplifies the repertoire, like knight d2 and knight c3 can both be met by d takes e4. And, you know, you can reach this position by force in almost all of your games. And I think, for the most part, black has, like, zero problems in, in these positions. I mean, if, if white is, like, super, super booked up, maybe he can, he can achieve some kind of a slight edge. But if you like playing positional chess, if you like, you know, going for, like, equality in, in your openings, and you like trying to, you know, grind out endgame advantages, and I'm, I'm increasingly becoming, like, really sort of in awe of those types of players like uh you know uh, Georg Meyer, Olf Anderson, 
uh, Karpov, you know, like those types of like Vladimir Kramnik. I just find that that degree of technical skill really impressive. And so an opening like this is is still kind of attractive to me. And as, as you get older, like I'm getting older, a lot of times I, I just like cannot be cannot be arsed to like, you know, study like these super sharp openings in depth and, you know, invest tons of time into positions that you, you might not see. It's just like I'm just nowadays I'm looking for something a little bit more practical, I think so. But OK, I really screwed myself. And of course, white played the <laughs> the uh, exchange variation. It is possible to spice up the game a little bit with C4 here, which which is an interesting try. There was um a very strong player of yesteryear. I'm not sure if it'll show up in the top games. No. Uh, I think Mices played this this uh, line a lot. The same guy who, who played the Mices Gambit in the Scandi and uh, the Mices variation of the, the Scotch, I'm assuming. Probably not too many Mices that were very strong chess players. Uh, and th this position is kind of interesting. White accepts a, an isolated pawn, but gets some activity for it, open development, etc. I mean, if you want to play the, the French exchange for a win, this is probably the best way to do it. Okay, I, I went bishop d6 here. I have a friend who plays the French defense, and I know after, like, bishop d3, he likes to go knight e7 with the idea of exchanging off this bishop on f5, so... This bishop tends to not have a super bright future, I think, in, in this line. Like, you saw it went to g4 for me and got exchanged off, or, you know, maybe it'll take on f3. But with this pawn on d5 especially, like, you know, these squares don't really do anything, and maybe here you're sort of committing to to giving it up for a knight, or, you know, coming back to g6 anyway, so maybe you should just go bishop f5 and leave leave white with this sort of pseudo very slightly problem bishop and get get rid of yours that's kind of the idea but and you can see in this position black actually scores pretty well i wouldn't expect black to score more than 50 percent but like you know after castles and bishop g5 and h3 actually after pretty much all of the moves black has a positive score so not not all that encouraging for for white but bishop e2, castles, castles, bishop g5 almost seems even more prospectless. It's not It's not that easy for white to really make something of his position. Okay, so the computer and the database both think h6 is the best move. I'm just curious why. So if I go bishop h4, what's the point? Okay, now bishop f5. Sure, knight b to d2. Knight B to D7. It does make maybe a little bit more sense to put your bishop on F5. I was not super thrilled about the possibility of Knight E5 when when I'm I'm kind of forced to exchange. So I want yeah probably if I ever got similar positions again I would likely put the bishop on F5. That way at least Knight Knight E5 does not force a trade of light square bishops. Yeah, so what if rook e1? I just don't totally understand what I'm supposed to be doing in these positions, I think. c6. So maybe black is just a little bit better based on slightly more active development. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think this position's about, about equal. I don't think black has much here. But yeah, knight, knight e5 is, is irritating. Maybe I should go bishop f5 just to retain some tension and keep some pieces on the board. And after knight d7, I can I can play bishop takes d7. I guess that's a, that's a good good point for... Yeah, but I was worried about this. Oh, of course not this way. Yeah, I mean, positions like this just aren't aren't really all that appetizing to me. Like, I would probably play bishop e7, and after knight c3, c6, it's just, whoops, it's uh, just not at all, not at all exciting. But this wasn't particularly exciting either. I was thinking queen e2 allowed rook e8, which was maybe annoying. Yeah, I, I think so. I think this is this is kind of an annoying move. And probably 
I, I think White was very correct and very precise in taking with the... Okay, so C6, really, and allowing this. I just could not, uh, could not really justify giving White this when, when he played the opening so unambitiously. I guess this knight is kind of bad, and this bishop is like, you know, I guess a reasonable piece. So, and, and with the heavily simplified material, it's not like my king is in any real danger. Like I can play just king h8, but but I didn't even feel like I should be giving white this option. Really, knight e5. I thought about this move, but I was uncertain about whether or not I wanted to go into this structure. I was just worried about something like f4. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure this is equal as well. I just didn't feel like playing against a pawn on e5. h3, h6, takes, takes. Yeah, and yeah, king f8 just getting ready to maybe play knight h5 to ugh, to f4 and also you know in order to do that i need to overprotect e7 one more time so that was the plan and i think maybe yeah maybe king f1 was not the best but is it really that bad so i went queen c7 threatening to get in I don't know why I made that blue. I kind of just like the colors. <laughs> Bishop G. So what if he just goes back? I mean, I wasn't certain that I really had anything. Queen F4. Ah, Queen F4 is a double attack. I didn't see that. True. I saw that there were ideas of Queen F4. I didn't see that I was hitting both things at the same time. Okay, so he must take, essentially. Take, take, Rook D1. Maybe takes. Ah, you can take with the Knight, though. I don't understand a5 at all. Maybe just again trying to coax weaknesses in the in the white queen side. Hmm. Yeah, I don't get it. Can I just take this? Oh, maybe there's ninety two. What? Oh. No, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Alright. Well I think I think black is slightly better here regardless. I just I don't understand some of these computer variations, but some Oh, queen b4. Dang. Yeah, that was a miss. Just winning a pawn instantly. Bollocks. Yeah. But this doesn't seem really all that bad either. Queen e6, and now I have control of the e-file. I also have this cheapo. So he must go there, and I started to gain space. Ah, 94 immediately, though. 94 takes, takes pretty much has to go to some, like, h2 or g1. Let's say g1. Queen e2. Queen b4. Hmm. Yeah, here and... Black must be at least somewhat better. Oops. I'm not just bad with the mouse clicking of arrows, I'm also bad with the mouse clicking of evaluations, apparently. But I, I kind of like b5, too. I, I, I enjoy th these space-gaining plans when... I mean, I, I can play knight e4, really, whenever I want, so... And black is sort of devoid of... Or white is sort of devoid of reasonable ways of improving his position, so... Why not start to gain space on the queen side? And honestly, perhaps even on the king side. I don't know, h5, g, g6, etc., I don't know if I want to do that because it weakens the g5 square, but 
in general, like in these positions, like what is white going to do about me just before, before t- taking some kind of concrete action, what is white really going to do about me, uh, grabbing more space for, for the ensuing end game. And honestly, there's, there's even less like th- there's sort of practical advantages too. Like you saw in the game where, where, uh, it, where by pushing these pawns, I, I sort of make white a little bit antsy, and they, they make mistakes. It is reasonable, like, I noticed that the computer suggesting that white go b4 immediately, stopping stopping a5, so I wonder if I should start with a5, actually. I guess he can go a4 in that case. I wonder which is better. I guess I'd probably rather have him go b4, huh? So so maybe it's maybe it's better to start with b5 because b4 is significantly more weakening. But this is probably actually the worst combination because it, at least after after b4 this does not hit the pawn on a3. And and the pawn on a a the a file is not fixed. Like at some point, white can go, white can go a four and kind of get rid of this pawn and perhaps even open up the uh, a file. But in this version, the pawn is just simply stuck on on a three and <laughs> computer doesn't even care. Computer's just like yeah, just just go to b six. Screw it. This doesn't do anything. But no human's gonna allow queen h seven. It just doesn't. It's just not in the cards. I think. But rook d2 was a strong move. I didn't see rook d2. Th- th- this is really White's only chance to to try and take back the e-file. Or else he's just going to have to sit there and, and suffer. I think f4 was bad, though. F- f4 is just extremely weakening. Weakening the king, weakening the e3 square. Um, and And now he doesn't have the option of going f3 because... And fighting for this weak e4 square, it, it, yeah, I, I think this move is just uh, pretty bad. It, it looks kind of natural. Maybe white wants to go f5, or maybe he just wanted to, to gain more space, perhaps go rook e5. But, um, yeah, it just doesn't work out the way he thought it would. And then I think further, just he he hung the the a3 pawn, and after that, I, I think the game is just is completely over. And I think he pretty much had to. Well, I mean, okay, it's all it's all losing at this point. I mean, if he, if he exchanges, he's just lost. I can just put my knight back on c4, and this a3 pawn is pretty much going the distance. Or even if he, okay, even if he somehow manages to get his king over in time, my my king is going to walk into his king side via the e4 square, and that's going to be it. So. And after this, yeah, there's just this simple attacking the pin piece over and over again. And it, there, there, there are a lot of end games like this where you see that one side wins by pinning like this. And instead of just exchanging immediately, because I have a free move, he can't really move any of the important. He can't really disturb any of the important facets of this position without moving his king. So I've, I have kind of a free move. Like his king is going to end up on e3 no matter what. But I have a free move to to push the a pawn like king f3 and then i take a2 and of course he's lost so but yeah an an odd game it just seems like uh like after this it's i mean white has to be pretty careful here because the position is completely symmetrical the only difference right now is that it's it's white's turn to move but his bishop is on the somewhat worse e2 square compared to the the d6 square i think you know my bishop on e7 would be worse than on e2 this keeps the e-file open for me and close for him and this is a more active diagonal so uh you know i think that that already white needs to be a little bit careful he's got the move so he he you know he's probably not worse but you know, it's only a couple of 
it's only a couple of uh maybe an inaccuracy away from white being really worse. And that's the downside to playing these these opening lines that aren't really that challenging, is you're really one inaccuracy away from being worse out of the opening. And I think after king f1, you kind of see that. Like, but I'm not sure I played played really all that well up through up through here like I think maybe I even could have had a better position than I got like I think the position here is pretty close to being slightly better for black I mean I, I'm, I think it's about equal but I think with maybe really precise play black can maybe be on the better side of equal and then but but around here I think the position is completely equal I don't I don't think I have almost anything so I don't think I played that great until king f1 and then queen c7, I think. Especially this position, I think, ended up being... Okay, this position ended up being just clearly better for black. And... Yeah, I mean, part of it is white would rather have the pawn on c3 than the knight on c3. This knight is really not, not very good. Whoops. Uh, he would rather have the pawn on c3, I think, but... Um, and, and he's losing control of the e-file, but yeah, and then it, it got quite a bit worse from there. White sort of made some some positional errors, and then yeah, it was it was all over. So I don't think I I deserve to win this game. I think this position is completely equal, but yeah, I mean that that illustrates the the sort of danger of sometimes playing these these kind of unambitious symmetrical type systems. But, you know, I mean, some, some players make livings off, you know, playing playing these types of positions. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys had uh, a good weekend. I think it's Monday, right? Yeah, it's Monday. Tomorrow is my birthday. I don't know if I'm going to record. Maybe I'll record a, a birthday video. I'll do something kind of silly and not very serious on my birthday. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a good start to your week. Make it a great Monday, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.